My dad bought a rifle for $75 from Dick's Sporting Goods, one of those CO2-powered air guns, to deal with the gophers that were tunneling through his carefully manicured lawn. He tried traps. He tried poison. He tried prayer. And now he was just going to shoot the little bastards. I was young, but I could puzzle out that gophers lived underground, so the only opportunity you would have to shoot them was when they poked their heads above the earth, which was rare. But my father was a patient man. He still is. His lawn nowadays is artificial, but back when he lorded over a great swath of rich green fescue, he had all the time in the world. So he set up a lawn chair behind a sawhorse, rested the rifle against it, aimed it downrange, and waited for one of the buck tooth fuckers to poke their head out for a breath of fresh air and a bullet. <laughs> they weren't real bullets. They were tiny lead pellets that stained your fingers when you loaded them into the rifle's barrel. I joined my brothers to watch this spectacle, sitting behind Dad as he set up his makeshift gopher blind. My younger brother, who had an arsenal of cap guns in his bedroom, was especially excited. He was a firearm enthusiast as early as the first grade. Being in the presence of a real gun and not just a wooden musket he got from a Disneyland gift shop was quite the treat for him. My older brother seemed impatient. He was at that age where boys act like they're too cool for certain activities but are really bad at hiding their interest. As for me, I watched with great anticipation. Sitting between my brothers like the middle child I am, I liked the lawn. I liked playing wiffle ball and roughhousing there, getting grass stains on my clothes. The gophers tore up the lawn and left mounds of dirt everywhere, so I shared my dad's interest in tackling the problem. We spotted movement from one of the holes, a flurry of ejected dirt. Below the earth, the gopher was remodeling, perhaps making room for some little ones he and his pregnant gopher wife were expecting. Are gophers monogamous? Probably. Let's just say yes. <laughs> what happens next is sadder that way. <laughs> My dad adjusted the elevation dial on the scope with the air of a man trying to look like he knew what he was doing. The scope cost four times as much as the gun itself and was intended for real hunting rifles used to shoot elk and bears. The sales associate at the store probably figured it was overkill putting a scope this expensive on a rifle this cheap, but said nothing. Maybe he worked on commission. The gopher finally emerged, a stout brown thing. It peeked from the hole, turning its head, looking for predators like a meerkat or a mongoose or a gopher. <laughs> My dad shot it. We cheered. Of course we cheered. We were boys, and dad had just done something awesome. He safetyed the gun and put on a pair of gardening gloves, then walked to the hole and retrieved his prize. We clapped as he raised it up in the air. It twitched. <laughs> My brothers and I wanted in on the fun. After several strict lessons on proper gun safety and handling, my dad let us use the rifle. We set up target practice and made a game out of it, which became a version of family time I most enjoyed. It was far more interesting than board game nights, my least favorite game was called Rummy Cube, which involved connecting numbered tiles with other numbered tiles or something like that. I, every time I pulled the air rifle's trigger, I wondered why anyone in my family ever thought Rummy Cube was fun. <laughs> One morning at the breakfast table, we noticed a web swaying in the breeze under a tree branch with a fat orb weaver spider directly in the center. My arachnophobic dad got an idea. Rifle in hand, he opened the door to the backyard and we all followed him out, leaving our cereal to its soggy fate. This we had to see. He walked out toward the web, brought the rifle to his shoulder, aimed directly in the center, and fired. The spider exploded. <laughs> Legs and guts and juices speckled the web. One second it was there, the next it wasn't. Did spiders go to heaven? I imagine when it got there, it would have a hard time explaining how it died. That got somebody. <laughs> this became a party trick my dad used to entertain guests. Friends would come over for dinner and cocktails, and if there was a web hanging from a tree or an awning over the front door, he'd get the rifle and the pellets, and everyone would abandon tasteful chit-chat for spider shooting time. 
the guests did the honors, and blew the spider to pieces. And everyone wondered why we didn't just start with this activity, instead of some boring conversation about what daughter just started taking piano lessons or what son just enrolled in community college. My brothers and I devoted our weekends to the air rifle. We didn't stop at spiders. With our new toy, we shot all manners of insects. Bees, beetles, cockroaches, grasshoppers. Some boys learn about violence by plucking the wings off flies. We learned about it by shooting them. We never shot lizards. The lizards that congregated near the woodshed had curious eyes and little flashes of blue in their bellies, and they bobbed up and down in the summer sun. Lizards were cool. Lizards got to live. <laughs> if his war with the gophers didn't already make it clear, my dad always wanted the yard to look nice. I know he did, because he made me work on it every weekend. He'd often come home with a truck bed full of flowers, then put my brothers and I to work planting them. But within days, rabbits had nibbled the blossoms down to the stems. Dad had a new enemy. There was just one problem. The rabbits would come out during the middle of the day while he was at work. He couldn't exactly take a break from financial planning to shoot rabbits during regular business hours. So he gave us permission to do it. My brothers and I were on summer vacation, and he figured we had plenty of time and rabbits to kill. Maybe he thought it would make us men. The Poway countryside wasn't exactly teeming with game. It wasn't like he could take us out into the wilderness to hunt boar, then smear our faces with the blood of our first kills. <laughs> the rabbits would have to do. My younger brother and I were excited. It was our opportunity to protect the yard from disrespectful rabbits who clearly didn't understand how much time and effort we put into it. By that point, I'd gotten pretty good with the air gun. I could plug a 7-up can at 50 yards, or one of those paper targets with a human figure on it with concentric circles in the head and chest, a shape that looked nothing like a rabbit. My brother and I went upstairs to a window overlooking the yard, feeling like a two-man sniper team. I beat him in rock, paper, scissors, which meant I would have the honor of being the trigger man. I was 14. We had collected some unwanted fruit and scattered it where we expected the rabbit to emerge. We waited. The bushes stirred. The rabbit appeared. It nosed around and hopped toward the bait, pausing every few seconds to sniff the air. I brought my eye to the scope and lined up the reticle with the target. At that magnification, I could see the striations of color in the fur brown and gray and gold and white. I could see its breath, its rapid heartbeat, its twitching whiskers. Evolution hadn't prepared it for teenagers with strange hobbies. <laughs> I flicked off the safety and aimed for the plump cheek under its eye. I fired. Did you know that rabbits scream? I didn't. The rabbit leapt three feet into the air and then fell, convulsing, legs kicking, spinning on the spot as if its head was pinned to the ground. Then it started screaming. It was a perverse sound, somewhere between a squeak and a squeal. It kept screaming and spinning and bleeding before it finally slowed. Then it was still. Jesus. I looked at my brother, his eyes wide and his jaw agape. I must have looked the same way to him. You never forget your first kill. I can sense some of you pulling back right now. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not like I collected the corpse of the rabbit and took it down to the basement to dissect it. That's ridiculous. Houses in San Diego don't have basements. <laughs> I won't deny it, I found it fascinating. I had done everything right. I'd set the trap, I waited for my opportunity, and I fired with precision. I had defended the yard, the place that was only home to life which we allowed to be there. In the yard where you found weeds, you uprooted them with shovels. Where there were bugs, you sprayed them with chemicals. And, when, and where there were rabbits, you shot them with guns. Actually killing something with a gun was inevitable because I spent my childhood around them. All of my favorite activities with my brothers and the neighbor kids involved guns. We carried huge super soakers, those marvels of toy craft engineering, massive cannons you pumped like shotguns, and we used Nerf guns. My favorite was a double action, single shot pistol. I figured out how to weaponize it by removing the suction cups from the foam darts and replacing the tip with a length of electrical tape. 
Using the right amount of tape meant that when we loaded the darts, our guns became pressurized. They exploded out of the barrel with such velocity, they left welts on bare skin. We'd run around the house, shooting each other in the face and knocking over furniture until our mom screamed at us. We broke lamps and skinned knees. Nerf fights were only successful if they ended with someone hurt and angry. So, yeah. Of course I'd get to a point in my adolescence where, given the opportunity to use an actual firearm, I'd murder an innocent animal whose only crime was enjoying the taste of flowers. I was taught that rabbits were bad, and the yard was good, and you're supposed to get the bad out of the good. That's why I went to confession every month. I was absolutely filled to the brim with bad thoughts and bad choices, but as long as I told an old guy in a confessional booth about how sorry I was, I would be okay, right? But did I confess to killing the rabbit? No. I was just doing what my dad told me to do. As far as I was concerned, God thought I was a decent shot. And I was pretty sure thou shalt not kill only applied to people, and I hadn't killed any of those, so I was pre pretty sure that God still loved me. At least I hoped he did, because when I was a kid, I gave God several reasons to be concerned. <laughs> I was an emotional furnace. Call it classic middle child upbringing. Call it childhood depression. Call it whatever you want. I felt like an unstable reactor, and all it would take was one screw-up in the control room to melt me down. I was the last kid you wanted to give an air rifle to. <laughs> my brothers were level-headed compared to me, calmer, less prone to outbursts. So how is it that after successfully making it to adulthood, they ended up in the military, and I wound up in marketing? <laughs> Both of my brothers have racked up the kill counts. My older brother especially. He flew F-18s in Afghanistan and carried a sidearm, a custom Sig Sauer 45. It had a beautiful cherry wood grip and a squadron's skull and crossbones etched above the rear sight. In the summer after I graduated college, he came home and slid a DVD into a laptop and showed me aerial footage from his first tour. Black and white infrared images of a direct hit on a Taliban truck the white hot flash, the blossom of fire, the starburst of ejected debris. I tell myself now that whoever was in the truck probably didn't feel a thing. One second he was there, the next he wasn't, like a spider in suburban Poway that never saw it coming. But at the time, I just thought it was cool to see America's enemies brought to justice in a video montage featuring Kenny Loggins' music. It was 2009, and as far as I knew, my brother was doing noble work. To me, he served a purpose, one I could see clearly at a time when discovering my own purpose was on top of my mind. It was in the middle of the Great Recession, and I was just as depressed as the economy was. What was a stable job with a purpose and a paycheck like my brother's? Got it. I'll become a police officer. I wasn't exactly thinking clearly at that age. What 22-year-old ever has? But off I went, filled with idealism. I took the entrance exam, got a letter of recommendation from a professor, applied to the job, and started daydreaming about how much of a difference I would make in my community as an upstanding crime fighter. Maybe I could have my own six hour 45. I was immediately rejected. It wasn't the gut punch I expected it to be. Sure, I stewed about it for a few days, but soon I was back at it. I'll spare you the details of my LinkedIn journey, but I turned out all right. Copywriting requires less discipline and more creativity than law enforcement. But I imagine if I had become a police officer, I wouldn't have to deal with one constant question that my multiple gun-owning, opinionated, and totally lovable younger brother always asked me. Dude, when are you going to buy a gun? He's not someone who thinks that every American needs a rocket launcher, but his views diverge enough from my own that I argue with him incessantly about the Second Amendment. And because I know enough about guns to be annoyed when Hollywood portrays them incorrectly in movies, or because I've played my fair share of Call of Duty, he seems to believe that I'm one bad day away from hitting up the local pawn shop and purchasing my first Glock. There is a version of me in a parallel universe who's a big gun nut, a stalwart defender of an American's right to bear arms and rise up against tyranny a fiery and outspoken champion of liberty who reads Ayn Rand, votes for third-party candidates, and shoots every goddamn rabbit he sees. <laughs> but there was a point where I embarked on the timeline where I don't need or want a gun. I've never been in a scenario where one might prove useful. 
I live in a safe neighborhood. I've never had to battle for resources or territory. And I've never served in a war. One time I was shopping for a birthday present for my nephew, my older brother's son, and I meandered down the aisle with the Nerf guns. I felt a wave of nostalgia as I came across a pistol which looked remarkably similar to the one I played with as a kid. But then I saw one that was modeled in the alarmingly accurate shape of an AR-15. With a foregrip and a charging handle and everything, it even had a battery-powered holographic sight. I bought my nephew a Lego octopus instead. <laughs> I don't think there's anything important guns can teach. I didn't learn anything from shooting 7-Up cans. I didn't learn anything from shooting spiders. And I certainly didn't learn anything from shooting a rabbit, except that rabbits scream. Thank you. Brent Hanafy, everybody!